Are you tired of paying monthly or annually for your Ring doorbell? Well, I got some alternatives that I've found, so let's check them out. I've been searching for the perfect smart doorbell for a while now, and here are two that I came across. We have the Foscam and the UC. Now, first up is the UC, and what makes it very unique is that it supports PoE. So PoE, if you don't know, is power over ethernet. Now I know that's kind of overkill for a doorbell, but I would like to be able to take whatever doorbell I end up installing and feed that video feed directly into my Blue Iris surveillance server so that the video is stored on site in my network instead of in the cloud. So I'm gonna take this video doorbell from UC and hook it up and it connects over PoE, which is power over ethernet. So there will be a physical cable that plugs into this, provides data and power. Now here is the Foscam. Now if we take a look on the back, it supports Ethernet. Now what I don't know is that if this is just a standard Ethernet connection, uh, but from what I've seen online, it is some kind of Ethernet adapter over to USB-C that then connects to the back of the doorbell. Let's get the cable run. So I'm up here in my garage and there is my Ubiquiti Tough switch, which provides PoE or power over Ethernet to some cameras, as well as I ran this connection here. This is just temporarily set up like this and I will go ahead and tack it down. It comes on over here, and down the wall, and then out the other side for the doorbell. So I've had the UC installed here for a while and well, it sucks. Let me tell you a couple of things. Uh, first off, when you ring the doorbell, it is not actually ringing the doorbell, which is why I went ahead and had to tape the sign to it that says, please knock, doorbell broke. Well, the video does work, but when you push the button, the notification on your phone, it doesn't respond in a manner uh, that you would expect it to. So like the ring doorbell and pretty much every other video doorbell, the app itself will ring and like you can pick it up. Well, this, it just makes the same notification noise as say like a text message. It'll show up in your alerts, but then you've got a whole bunch of other alerts on your phone and you can't even find the stupid thing. Then when you open up the app, it wants to play freaking ads. <clears throat> Seriously. Ugh. Well, this doorbell was only like 60 something bucks. So it sucks. Now, after doing a bunch more research, it turns out that there are some third-party firmware hacks that people have, I guess, like disassembled the existing firmware and then added in access for Telnet or SSH, and then you can do some things on it. However, it becomes kind of unstable where the doorbell needs to be rebooted. Uh, just overall, this is uh, kind of a crappy design, like seriously, ads in the freaking app. I mean, uh, there should be laws against that. You shouldn't have to hack a doorbell to make it work properly. It's just my opinion. And if I hit the button, it looks like the doorbell actually froze in the app. Wow, I had to push it a whole bunch of times. Look at that, Farm Fruit Blast, 4.5 free. Seriously, freaking advertisements. What the heck? Hello. Hello, who was at the door? Hello, who was at the door? Yeah, it's not that good of uh, sound quality, but whatever. All right, I'm pulling this out and I'm gonna to toss in the Foscam and hopefully that doesn't suck. So here is the Foscam. It shows that it is 2K at four megapixels, has AI detection, 2.4 gigahertz, five gigahertz dual band Wi-Fi, weather resistant, app video calling, and night vision. Now this is the DBW5, flipping it over. So turning it over, you can also see that it supports the Alexa and Google Assistant. The field of view is 170 degrees diagonal, 152 degrees horizontal, and 81 degrees vertical. It is dual power. It connects to an existing doorbell wiring or power by DC type C port. And it also has an ethernet connection, so you do not have to use Wi-Fi. 
has an external SD card slot that supports up to 128 gigs. And if you wanted to, you could also put your footage on the cloud. It supports HDR, which is high dynamic range for a better picture quality, and it has infrared night vision. Let's crack it open. Is this the one doorbell to roll them all? Let's find out. Got a layer of plastic in here with a little pamphlet. Got the doorbell with the protective film on it. Here is where the micro SD card slot is and a USB-C slot for the Ethernet port. Here are several different mounts for the doorbell and some kind of funky USB-C to USB-A, possibly for power, and then Ethernet. Let's go ahead and look at the pamphlet in here, see what we can find out and learn about this doorbell. Here is the quick setup guide. A little sticker. There's a drill hold position template. One year of free extended warranty. Looks like a little return card with a little bit of information about warranty. A quick setup in German and the sticker. So let's take a look inside and see what it can tell us. What I'm hoping is that it will have a voltage range that might fall within the spec of PoE. Well, it looks like it is probably not PoE because it is referencing because right here you can see it shows it is 5 volts DC with 1 amp power. So I might just connect up the wires from the old doorbell to supply power and see if that's enough to turn it on and then connect it over Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi. So I've had the FOSCAM installed for a while and I will say that uh, the way I have it configured is there is a adapter that goes ahead and plugs in via USB-C that allows you to be able to connect Ethernet to it. Uh, then I went ahead and ran the two wires for power over to the doorbell. Now let me show you how this works. If I go ahead and push it, now what's annoying is that like this won't shut off. And when I try to go ahead and pull it up, I open up the app, it sits there. Now, I don't know why it's doing like an intro all over again as I've used the app before. And then I come over to it and hit connect and it's still making that stupid noise. So Foscam, if you're watching, please fix this. That is so annoying. And I don't know if you can see that, but is trying to establish a connection to the camera, uh, it doesn't seem to work reliably. Now, this is hardwired. It's not over Wi-Fi, so there's no reason that it shouldn't be reliable. And then now the motion alarm popped up and you can see right here, the actual video on my phone. So here is some actual video footage directly from this doorbell. Now, I captured this via RTSP, streaming right over to my Blue Iris server, and then just exported it out at uh, full resolution settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here and you can see the detail that is captured by this doorbell. It is by far way better, in my opinion, than anything that Ring offers or any other brands at the current moment. Now when it does work, it does work pretty good, but uh, it's not as reliable as Ring and it had quite a bit of issues as well, which is the whole point on why I left it. I did go ahead and make sure that I had the latest version of firmware for the camera, which it does. And I do have it set up via RTSP so that my Blue Iris surveillance server can go ahead and constantly record the footage directly from the doorbell which is what I wanted. Let me know if you know any way to be able to fix the issue with the FOSCAM on Android, where it just keeps ringing and it's really annoying and also doesn't always let you connect 
right after somebody rings the doorbell. Or if you have a better doorbell that you think I should go ahead and get that will fit my needs. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.